All right, before this video begins, I want you to go back to my YouTube channel or here and go look into the Hooks series, especially the first video where I explain how Hooks came to be and the history and then I make a small example, all right? After you're there, come back here, all right? So pause, go. All right, and now you're back. So uh, as you saw in the video, Hooks um, is basically uh, a way to hook into the React state machine, all right? And it's very life-changing because like I said, it makes the code more pretty. We don't use classes anymore and everything becomes uh, functional programming, which is, um, in my opinion, a very nice style of programming, all right? So I think that you already know uh, the first hook, which will be use state, but just for the sake of people that don't know, let's look into that. So use state uh, returns always two values. The first value is the whatever item you give it, and the second value is a modifier of that value, all right? And what we do is that we use use state, and as you can see here, use state gives us at the beginning an option to set the initial state. So in this case, we're gonna say one, right? And we're good to go, that's it. But use state is not um, imported, I think. So we're gonna do use state, and now it's imported here. And now it's all good. Now, this thing here, these names are completely optional, all right? Like you can put whatever name you want. It doesn't have to be item, set item. It could be potato and flower, okay? It, it, it doesn't really matter the name of these things, okay? The thing is that use state returns an array, okay? And this is how you select the first and the second element of the array. You could, for example, if you wanted only the item, instead of doing this, you could just do item, for example, and if you want only the item, you could just do this. Or if you wanted the modifier function, you could do this. And that will be zero or that will be one, all right? Now, on user state, once we have this, then we can just literally just call it here. Right, and that will say one. And the good thing about hooks is that it encourages functional programming a lot. So for example, let me just turn this into a arrow function just because of my taste, you don't have to do it, right? And here, for example, let's do increment item. And what this is going to do is that what we're gonna do is we're gonna do set item. And we're gonna take the item plus one. So increment item, as you can see, will take the item plus one. Also the same thing, decrement, I guess, item. Uh, set item. Item minus one. All right, nothing should happen here. We're still going, no problem. And now let's make a button. And all we have to do now is just call the on click here. And decrement here, and we're good to go. All right, so if we increment it, it works. And if we decrement it, it works. Now, I want you to look at this code and see how easy it is, all right? And how clean it is. If we translated this, just to, just to fuck around, let's translate this to a class component, right? If, because before these hooks happened, we couldn't use hooks on classes. Uh, oh, sorry. Before hooks happened, we couldn't use a state on functional component. If we wanted to work with state, it had to be on a class component, but class components come up with some rules, like the word this, and some methods like render, and stuff like that. With hooks, everything of that goes away. And all we have to do is return, which is basically a render, and we can just have things here at the top, and you will see the difference. So, if I wanted to make the same thing on app, I would have to do um, class, let's do app ugly, extends uh, react 
component right and then I will say state equals item that will be by default one right and then I will do render and here I will do item from the state this that state and then I'm gonna return the same thing this part doesn't change right and here it is and now I have to make two functions increment and decrement so here we go increment and decrement and then inside of here I have to do this set state I get the previous state and I'm the return item state that item plus one and that will be the same thing for decrement I guess copy paste it and then here it will instead of this increment it will be this whoopsie sorry this and this right so that's it look at how big it is look at the massive this massive now let's try to render this to see if it works refresh and it's not a problem it still works but look at how massive it is this is to from 49 to 20. that's a lot of lines and look at these lines A little bit more that's insane all right it's crazy a little bit more than 10 and we're done look at that all this or all that and that's a big difference when you're making a hundred line components all right so that's it that's react hooks for you this is not the only hook there are many hooks such as use state use effect um Let's look at all the other hooks. Use state, use effect, use context, use reducer, use callback, memo, reference, whatever. We're gonna look at this, some of them. And yeah, but the, the biggest one, the biggest game changer for me is, for example, this one, use state. Look at how short everything makes it. And it's so easy to reason about these things. You can just see this and anybody will understand, even if they're not a programmer, anybody will understand what this does. It's, it's, it's crazy. But this requires you, like, what is this? right and set state where is this coming from and then again the word this here and then previous state and so it's a little bit more complex all right so that's why hooks rule and that's explanation for use state it's not very hard it's very very simple this one is the initial value this is a modifier and the first one is going to be the item all right and that's it i will see you on the next one bye bye